Good morning, or depending on who is watching, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. My name is Josh. I live in the Houston area, and I love cardboard, sports, Pokemon, and Yu-Gi-Oh! related products. I am hype. I'm about to go on vacation with the fam, so I wanted to sneak in this 171 uh, Q2 back in uh, Q2 grading special of Pokemania. $7.50 per card to grade. I sent in 171, they graded 166. And we'll go over uh, the few that they did not grade, unfortunately. So starting off, got a big old stack of slabs here. This is mostly just to be, you know, transparent like you usually try to do on videos this is mostly going to be um pokemon detective pikachu cards i busted as you'll see a whole lot of it um got the gym there so that's good i think i probably should have pretty close to if not uh almost all of a of hopefully a pokemon detective pikachu set and gym at tens but I opened a lot of the $14.99 Charizard Premium Case Files. And in each uh, 2019 Pokemon Sun and, Noon, Sun and Moon Detective Pikachu pack, there were four cards. And as you can see from the artworks on these cards, <clears throat> and there's a few sprinkled in here and there, like these two right here. The Gengar is nice. The Gengar is a good example of uh, taking a, a simple rare or reverse rare in a pack, um, especially if it's a fan favorite Pokemon like a Gengar, and um, and you know its full potential being met in the PSA 10 case, especially if you took advantage of anywhere from the seven dollars and fifty cents to ten dollars a card to grade these Pokemon cards. But anyways, um, each Pokemon card pack from Detective Pikachu. Ran roughly about three or four bucks a pack, so um, that's about a dollar average per card, and so I'm probably in about eight, nine bucks each, each Detective Pikachu card with grading fees. Um, you saw that Unbroken Bonds. I also have some random rares and and reverse rares sprinkled in here too, and a couple of nice ones like I got a Charizard and. Hey, they're still graded cards. I love graded cards. I have more Morlo later. I know these are not all in perfect order. Um, and the reason I'm not going over pricing as much this time again is just because the average price, um, the average price that I probably spent busting the pack was probably somewhere around three or four bucks. So there's box one. Let's get to box two. I do have a Supreme Victor's Level X Charizard though. I paid fifty dollars for that one, so that'll be a that'll be a fun that'll be a fun show as well. And I already got the tape busted on these boxes, so ready ready to get to it. I like to take a P Detective Pikachu, as you can tell, these are really uh, you know photos from the movie. More or less, not really, uh, you know, from from the film himself. In fact, each card actually says that down there. If you look at this, it just says NPC film, um, and then the uh, the Detective Pikachu logo with the magnifying glass and Pikachu's tail. So very clever. But so again, these cards are different. To where you know they're not uh, hand drawn art; they're from the film. So more Morlos. Value wise, is still decent, I believe. Um, mostly nines, but I do have some tens in this order as well, too. I am not showing the backs of the cards as much as I probably should. I will admit, because we're about to go on our fun 2021 summer vacation in San Antonio, SeaWorld, the Riverwalk, going to do some, some fun stuff. I'm probably rushing this a little bit because we're about to leave here in a little bit. The slacking on the gym in 10. I forgot where that part in the film. I know when the Charmander came. That's towards the beginning. But I do enjoy the movie Detective Pikachu. Um, the Ditto character is interesting in the movie because 
the antagonist, if you will, the bad guy of the film, uh, actually ended up making Ditto. Hopefully I didn't spoil that for anybody. Sorry if I did. <laughs> Loricola! You too, Ludicolo. I was really hoping for one gem 10 on the Mewtwo. It didn't happen. And I do have some more Detective Pikachu. This one's nice. These two, I think, for the set that I'm that I'm chasing down will probably have to be placeholders because I didn't get the gem 10 and the Mewtwo or the Detective Pikachu, so that's unfortunate. But that's that's all right. It's going to happen. A couple more nines. Then you got to end the box with a gem 10, right? That's the way it should be. It's a tad unfortunate on the five cards that they didn't slab because um, along with Detective Pikachu, um, right around 2016, towards the end of 2016, when uh, XY uh, released uh, Evolutions, that's really when I got back into Pokemon cards and I busted a lot of Evo, uh, including five cards that uh, had square cut corners and a alignment dot. Actually, were the ones that ended up getting, getting busted, so that's unfortunate. These will go towards my GX Master Set. I'm trying to hunt down all the Tag Team GXs and all the GXs, so that'll be a fun chase. Pretty artwork on those two. This is not the hyper rare Gyarados that you want, but that's all right. Again, for so many of these Pokemon cards, it's really hard to lose on $7.50 a card. Um, Keldeo is actually featured in the movie, and this one's nice too. Look at this. Shining Legends. Shining Legends is a really good example of an English set, similar to a Japanese set that has a really strong identity. Um, kind of what we're seeing with Eevee Heroes. With what we're seeing with Eevee Heroes... Eevee Heroes has a very strong identity. This is actually my brother's card. Bottom of a random pack of Celestial Storm pulled that. So I'll get that to him. With Eevee Heroes, ooh, this one's nice. Look at that. Eevee Heroes has a very direct and strong identity with the Eeveelutions, but with Evolving Skies, um, you know, kind of taking a similar approach with the Eeveelutions, but also Dragons, it's a little... It's not as clear what the identity is of Evolving Skies. I don't think what Evolving Skies will be as clear as it is with Evolutions or Shining Legends. Here's from the uh, the ETB, and then from that same ETB, the Glaceon. That's unfortunate. Um, still beautiful cards though. Hard to go wrong with a lot of these cards, especially in eights or nines. I've had this one for a while. The back of this one's super rough, as you can tell. Um, you got some personality down there and there, but, uh, I mean, I don't know how long I've had that card, but I know it's, it's, it's been a while. This is from the Burning Shadows Elite Trainer Box that I pulled the Charizard from, the Hyper Rare, the Ho-Oh, so that'll go towards the GX Master Set, as will at least one of these Charizards. Got a couple of nines, and again, these come from the, um... The, uh, the collection case files. You've got the promo chars on front. Eight. I do have some tens though. Eight certainly is not what you're looking for. Maybe I'll split this video up into parts. Maybe not. I'm not sure. We'll see how many we can show up before the family gets a little antsy and comes in here and starts bugging that uh... On the fourth box here, starting off with a half grade. You don't see those a lot from PSA. Schnapple. Schnapple. And sorry from rushing. A couple of nines. Oop. Certainly hope everyone is doing well, enjoying collecting, however you are. The Mr. Mime scene is funny, where uh, where the main character in Pikachu, voiced by Ryan Reynolds, uh, play good cop, bad cop with Mr. Mime. <laughs> it's a good scene. I do enjoy the movie a lot. My son and I actually really enjoy, um, this is a good one too, in the bar room with the guys head down because Jigglypuff sang him to sleep. 
I do enjoy watching majority of the Pokemon movies uh, with my son. A couple of them, though, especially if you have uh, Apple TV or, or the Amazon Fire Stick, got the Gym Mint 10, that Jigglypuff. They don't have a couple of them. Um, they don't have the Sully the movie. I'm trying to remember. There's a couple others they don't have. But the movie he and I watched yesterday was the one with uh, Lucario and the History of Mew. These came out of the Mewtwo and Mew uh, Hidden Fates Shining Collection pin boxes. I think I'll have to hold on to that one. That's a nice one. From the Sun and Moon era. Always good to get gem tins in order, right? Especially when you're only in it. $7.50 a card. Hard to complain about that. But uh, obviously a lot of these will be for sale. I think I'll auction a good amount of the gem tens and probably buy it now is on the a good amount of the nines. I do like to document these reveals just to so you guys can get a good idea of what I'm grading. I think I sent in every Detective Pikachu card except for the promos. I need to hunt down the promos eventually. Lick a tongue. Lick a tongue on the bus when we're heading to Rhyme City. There's a nice shiny right there. I did get a 10 on one of the Ralts, but I also got a 9, so. 9 on the Machamp. Directing traffic. I think I should have a 10 on the Machamp, too. Yeah, there we go. This one was the banger. Right here. This Mewtwo. I guess value-wise. Um, I was really shocked this one got a 10. I was hoping for an 8 or 9. Just because these came in the Evolution uh, theme decks. And... You know, you get the cracked ice effect there, but tens on these have got to be low pop. I'm not sure what the pop is. I see a small little speck of white down there, but uh, that that was definitely the banger in the order. Was was the Mewtwo? A couple of Beldum nines from a Hidden Fates Shiny Vault set. It's about I couldn't get a ten. That's okay. It's gonna happen. A Voltorb nine, a Shepherd ten. So that's definitely good. I'm gonna put these a lot of the uh, a lot of these in the uh, um, Wobbuffet V. Jesse and James pulled this one from the HEB pack. Jesse and James is nice. I'm gonna put a lot of these in the uh, uh, cases that are able to uh, fit in the binders, the three ring binder cases that hold your slabs. This one's from the set Changlers, so this is not the promo. And these come in the Ultra Ball, Hidden Ball, uh, Hidden Fates boxes. But a lot of times with these promos, um, with the plastic molds that hold the card, a lot of times it can kind of crimp up the round corners or edges um, and, and make those cards you know, somewhat difficult sometimes to jam. Let's see, how am I doing on time? Probably need to... Pick it up just a tad, huh? Let's get to box number six, though. Let's see. Starting off on box six, we've got a couple more of the promo Charizards on top from from the uh, from the boxes. There we go. There's a gym ten for the GX collection. I think I may keep a gem 10 for the GX collection, uh, GX master set, and a gem 10 for the uh, um, the Pokemon Detective uh, Pikachu collection. I know I have more than a couple. I always like this artwork, and I'm surprised PSA didn't notate it on the slab. But I actually pulled these. These were not from the Unbroken Bonds packs that I pulled these from. I pulled these from the... Um, um, Pokemon every year when they do their tournaments, they will then release the decks of the tournament winners, 
And so that's what this was. This was right on top in the box and you didn't have to pull from pack. So I'm, I'm surprised PSA didn't notate that in the slab. They do that a lot with Yu-Gi-Oh! as far as uh, reprint cards. Um, you know, they put the range of time that the card was reprinted in. And even though this card wasn't necessarily printed from Broken Bonds, um, you know, you could either pack pulled it from Broken Bonds or you could have waited for the tournament decks to be released and you just could have bought it like that. I am chasing the Evolutions Hollow. Don't know if I'll keep that reverse foil though. This was kind of a... So there's a dent or a crease that I missed in this card. Oh, see it right there. See it? Yep, right there. That's on the card, that crease right there. So I got a five. I missed it. That one was on me. And I don't really buy into the... Uh, I don't know if I buy into the um, the pop control stuff as much. I mean, I know that so many content creators around YouTube, you know, give their rationaliz rationalization for why they feel like PSA is pop controlling. I don't know, though. I feel like, you know, there's still so much stuff you can miss on a card, surface, corners, edges, all that if you don't have loop. These came out of the Evolution 1-pack blisters. Uh, this is when I really, and I pulled this from a pack, this is when I really got back, back into Pokemon cards. So this is special. Pulled that one myself. I got a Mint 9 in there somewhere. A couple of reverse foils from Evolutions. The near Mint 7. Let's see if we can cat caught what was wrong on the near Mint 7. Ah, uh, y'all see there? I see it. Yep, see that? That's on the card, that's why. That could actually be a generous grade for a near miss seven. This could deserve a six or a five with surface marks like that. This would go to the GX set, but I do have a mint nine, so I'll go to the eight. A tag team master set. Okay, so here's the Charizard and Breaks on mint nine. This one I paid $50 for. And so even in a, you know, a re-correcting down market, uh, whatever you want to call it, I'm still getting, I'm still getting really good value for the 50 that I paid for it raw and the 750 I'm into it grading cost wise. Um, it does have some edge wear down there, edge wear over there and has a corner right there. But, uh, the reason I liked it, the front showed very minimal scratching. Um, so that was, a uh, another banger that was great from the order see box seven looks like in box seven i think obviously because the majority of this is still detective pikachu we have more detective pikachu shocker right i also when i get back from vacay have 40 more cards that will be mostly detective pikachu here's a mint nine there's a Greninja in the one pack blisters. Promo number 162. I saw promo number 163, which is the Weezing, speaking of, right on top. And the Gem 10, so that's nice. Hang on to that one. That one's fun. Here we also have a Mint 9. But I busted a decent amount of, uh, of those Evo one pack blisters. Did really well on the Greninjas. And actually, with my experience, this is random. I don't know if the pull rates reflect this. But with these two Greninjas, I busted, oh man, it must have been close to 100 packs of Detective Pikachu. And I only pulled two of the Greninjas. Because even though there's only four packs in each, or four cards in each pack, one is still only the rare. Um, and so... You know, I got the Slacking a lot, I got the Arcanine, got the Machamp, but I only pulled two of the Greninja, so the Greninja was a harder pull for me, as far as, we're, again, not knowing if that's reflecting the pack odds. Did decent on this run of Lickitung, so that's good. You can kind of see the, the hollow pattern and that is a big old tongue there. Reverse Rare Dialga, Reverse Rare uh, Undoom. Again, you know, I know mint nines aren't what you're looking for on these modern cards. You're looking for tens, but grading them at 750 per, it's just really hard to lose. Nice a little one going there to go towards the GX set. More snubble. 
I'm going to do a product review soon showing the, uh, the molds and the cases that fit in your three ring binders that uh, hold these uh, PSA cards. I did have the one charge, I have a few more, so this will have to be a placeholder until I get the 10. Then a random uh, Lost Thunder Hollow Blissey. I used to think this was a big hollow bleed, but I think majority of them uh, are, are like that. So, still very nice, very eye appealing. Next box. Appreciate you sticking with me. We've got box eight, box nine, and that's it. Looks like in box eight we have more Detective Pikachu and another rare half grade. Got an 8.5 on the Machamp, and a Jigglypuff, God, I got the Gym 10 on the Charmander, that's one Mint 9 placeholder I don't have to worry about. I think these Mint 9s are, depending on the Pokemon, are anywhere from the $20 to $40 range. So, a um, couple of nice Gen 1 starters there, back to back. I know Squirtle was in the movie. Too bad he wasn't in the set. That would have been nice to get get the gang back together, get, get the trio. So I did miss something, obviously, a lot on these near mint to mints, on these mints, but still okay. Still all right value-wise. Not bad at all. Still doing good. I would like to maybe, even with uh, PSA grading price changes, maybe like to do a bit of a, a higher roller, I, I guess more of a, a, a risk, a riskier uh, sub, where maybe sub some higher value cards that have more of a declared value than just you know an average of a buck depending on what you bust from packs last box you know they had super express for a while there from uh for 300 when psa was closed down but uh they did open back up express albeit at 50 dollars more but that's all right here are so uh, going to the five cards that were not graded, these five right here, no holder, and they coded it under N9 on the website. Oh, that's not cool, PSA. They didn't even put it back in the sleeve for me. Come on now. If you notice, these um, evolutions, similar to Chilling Rain, did not have the greatest quality control. And so that right up there, that is a square cut corner with a black printing alignment dot and then you've got a white alignment dot up there that is not a bad corner if you will that is an alignment dot and um so in the sports cards world th this is not very desirable but in the pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh card world uh it's actually something that can increase the value of your cards if you will i know that beckett slabs them i've seen cards like this in beckett cases um and then all of these cards if you can see on the back they have the same thing but that was unfortunate uh, you know, as I missed something on the 7. Let's see what I missed on the 7. As people have said before, oh, there's a little hollow bleed point there. Oh, big dent. There, I see it. See, that's on the card. Oh, yeah, that definitely deserves a 7. You know, you wait all your time to get your, your card slabbed, and then they don't slab them, but that is a risk that you take. Appreciate y'all sticking around with me. Hope you are enjoying collecting however you choose to do so as a collector, buyer, seller, dealer, trader, social media influencer, YouTube content creator, however you choose to enjoy the hobby. Side, I try not to get a, a headache there in the facility where they house Mewtwo. Okay, I appreciate y'all sticking around. Just under 25 minutes. Hope you enjoyed the reveal. And until the next one, I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.